What is up? This is Kyle with Free Speech Geek. This video is just a quick snippet from our latest podcast, FSG Weekly. If you like this video, be sure to give it a like and be sure to visit freespeechgeek.com for the latest con news. Now let's get into this. Hey, what is up, everyone? This morning, I am shill number one. I am with shill number two and shill number three. How's it going, guys? It's going good. Right now, we have, like, centralized servers. Everything's kind of, like, in one location. If it gets, if anything happens to that location, if the electricity goes out, the server goes out. Would a decentralized solution fix this? Because I still think it would. I don't think it would. I think people would still... Yeah. Uh, Here's my problem with the decentralized solution and like peer to peer peer to solutions because I was just thinking about this. I was like, oh man, yeah. if only there was like a, a way that we could have like a peer to peer network where it's like, hey, I want to watch Alien versus Predator. I know it's on Adam's server, so I'm just gonna like stream it to my TV. But do you guys remember back in the day when you had like MyTunes? That was like really big when when I was in college, and so like the dorm that I was living in, everyone was hooked into MyTunes, and so you could access everyone's iTunes library on the dorm floor and we were all sharing music yeah. and everyone's naming conventions for their tracks was all screwed up i would have albums that were like oh yeah this is coheed and cambria from the album called coheed and cambria and i'm like no it's not it was good apollo i'm burning star four like this is like everything was all misnamed the tracks had numbers in them instead of just being the track names can you imagine trying to like it, it's the same thing as like going to BitTorrent, and you're like okay i guess i'm gonna watch 720p dot flat gundam wing Ep, ep 19 like <laughs> that's a good point we're almost paying to have a yeah. service that streamlines that experience yeah pretty much yeah hmm. now could we perhaps develop a an llm like a you know a gpt that would go through and comb through that data and sort it and provide accurate title names and episode numbers and, and sort through that stuff for us maybe that stuff does does exist actually i want to say what was the software I was using recently for just that? Because it was something where for my MB server to see the title names, mm -hmm. the Gundam shows, I had to have it remove the number or something. And then I was able to have it go in, but probably not to specific detail that, yeah, chat GPT could. Um, so maybe yeah. that is the solution to a decentralized option. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, there, it's, it's interesting. The more that I'm seeing a uh, functionality of AI that makes sense. Yeah. Like that I'm using it too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's interesting. You think, cause the internet is just a bunch of networks, right? I have a network, you have a network, and then we connect to other servers that then connect to our networks. Ideally, like I would like to be able to have you connect to, like you said, like connect to my server, watch stuff on my MB server, all, all the stuff that I have or all the stuff that you have on yours. But it just is, is there's no solution at least business wise, that's going in that direction, right? This like no, your own sure. server, your kind of a bespoke kind of in house home lab solutions. It's all come to our cloud and we will we will provide you with that service. The software as a service, as we talked last time. Is I see like that that like you said, like a, a tool that uses AI that uses that that can find all your tracks, but is anyone collecting music to be able to do that now? Is there like enough people doing that these days um outside of pirates, but then you have to like essentially admit that your software is kind of in the, heading towards piracy and then it's that's it's a gray zone so i don't know well and i think it goes back to kind of the thing we were talking about last week when it comes to video games is once something is out of print you know mm -hmm. should there be legal protections around that ip around that particular uh, piece of media right um i know that disney loves throwing movies into their vault after march 31st disney will stop selling this timeless classic hurry this easter is your last chance to add Bambi to your collection before it disappears so that they can you know kind of protect the uh the integrity and the pricing of what you know those dvds and blu-rays are worth so that they can say hey cinderella's coming out of the vault again for the first time in 25 years and you know sell a collector's edition and all that stuff but like some of this stuff is never going to get released again. I mean, there's certain movies, I think uh, off the top of my head, I think a, a movie that I have not been able to find um, is a Korean film called Guns and Talks, one of my favorite movies um, when I was younger. And like, I can't find a copy of that anywhere now. Um, and I know that they're never going to make more copies of it. So, you know, at what point does it become okay to just to distribute that? Right. 
Um, we're seeing that with the, or at least I see that with a lot of the uh, kind of the fan translators. Is there? There's a lot of stuff. Uh, I'll bring up uh, Trafalgar Log, uh, Tr- Logan. On uh, check him out on Twitter. He does. He's essentially revitalizing the uh, Seed Astray manga, all of them. And oh. when I was younger, I don't know if it was Zionic or someone. They did it. They did the fan translations for it. They're really hard to find from like 20 years ago. You can't find those. So uh, Logan, this new translator just went back and did it himself did it all over again and that's great because 20 years ago i swear the concept of you in japan is like weird so everyone thinks that if you say you in an angry way it's like saying the f word so everyone was just throwing the f word everywhere and it's like look at me i'm edgy and it's fuck this fuck that i'm all like damn goku's saying fuck a lot what's happening (laughs) um so i'm kind of glad it's gone for that reason but that's a good that's a good example is that like uh one language which evolves so we need to constantly be retranslating this and two uh it's disappearing over time you know like especially like certain pirated versions of things existed at a point if you got it at that point you're good but like unless you're seeding it unless you're you're uploading it it doesn't exist one a great example of that is the uh the dubbed version of the gundam movie trilogy that's on archive right like you know that's and, and yeah. that's the benefit of having a centralized place like um, archive.org that that can keep that stuff and preserve it. Um, but to your point, you know they're they're not always going to be there if people continue to to sue them and accuse them of piracy when what they're doing is pretty much the opposite of that. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that's the problem, right? Is that it's not even a piracy issue. It's a no one is distributing this issue, so I'm putting it in my hands. And if you want to call that piracy, I guess it's piracy, but you didn't care about two minutes ago. It's one right. of those situations where they don't care until after you do it, which is interesting yeah. most of the time. That's um, most of <laughs> Yeah. No, no, I, I can uh, That's that's why I say that, like, you know, the, the IP protection that people have are way too heavy in favor of the license holder um and we've seen people take advantage of that i mean marvel has taken advantage of that to screw the original creators of a lot of their properties out of their rights yeah um and then they have and now they're partnered with disney they continue to do the same thing so you know i think 70 years is probably a little too long um Mm -hmm. to to protect rights like that i think that if you are not producing something actively using an ip that you created i don't know what would you say like 15 20 years tops uh but and it's the thing you're gonna get the the fantastic four effect right where Mm -hmm. fox holds on to it and it's like hey we're losing this next year and throw something together real quick and call it a fantastic four movie i guess <laughs> keep that yeah. IP. that's that's what i'm afraid of it's like you you put this 15 year thing and it's, if you if you don't use it within these 15 years someone will just come in and be like hey this is this is about the this is about the lapse let's make something and it will be out of no passion it'll just be out of let's keep it yeah well i mean isn't that the same thing as like domain squatting i know that's kind of a tangent but like you know there, there's this huge thing against like domain squatters now right like oh you're gonna speculate and buy all these domain names hoping that they'll take off and accrue value over time and it's like i mean that's the same thing that you'd be doing with ip it's just instead of paying the ten dollars or twenty dollars every year to renew your domain name you're paying you know five hundred thousand dollars a quarter of, or three quarters of a million for a cheap movie that you have to put out every so often yeah yeah yeah, I don't know. I don't know the solution to the problem outside of just these these people that are just putting it out there, you know? That's translating it, that's willing to to host it. That's dangerous in itself cuz you're you're being liable at that point. Um yeah. so yeah, I don't know. I don't know what a solution is, but I know that piracy isn't the problem at this point. The problem is distribution and there needs to be more explicit forms of distribution as uh isn't that a Gabe Newell's thing, piracy isn't the issue it's the uh it's the what is i forgot that i'm butchering the quote but it's like piracy isn't the problem it's your essentially how you provide your product more or less yeah the distribution method yeah Yeah. well and uh lewis rossman has a great quote on that too where it's like piracy only becomes acceptable when the pirate gets a better user experience than the paying customer (sighs) 
Yeah. And that, I, I find that that's a perfect, like, look, if I'm paying for a product, yes. if I'm paying for a service, if I don't get a better experience than the person who's stealing it, then why would I not steal it? Um, and, yeah. and his example comes from like Netflix throttling people's, um, throttling their resolution, resolution to 720p <laughs> when you're not using a specific set of hardware, a specific driver, a specific, like, mm -hmm. which is silly, you know? <laughs> No, just it's crazy how Breath of the Wild can run 4K 60 FPS on a PC if exactly. you're emulating it, but on a Switch, it doesn't run that great.